Um, so I leave the stage to uh, Antoine Savin. So we started talking about, uh, you know, not knowing how to solve a PDE 50 years ago where Neil Armstrong was already on the moon. Uh, today, Antoine will give you some of the latest. We came a long, a, a long way uh, since then, um, talking about AAD and machine learning for pricing and risk. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, Argent differentiation or AD is an algorithm to compute many derivatives of a given result very quickly and very accurately. AAD is an automatic implementation of AD, whereby developers only produce calculation code and the framework differentiated automatically behind the scenes. Now, you may think it's a lot of hype for a differentiation algorithm, but differentiation is a key problem in many, many fields, including deep learning and finance. In deep learning, we must compute the derivatives of prediction errors, also called losses, to all the connection weights in the network so that we can adjust these weights to improve the errors. That's how we train a network. In finance, we compute prices of derivatives transactions and trading books, generally with Monte Carlo, from a large number of market variables, including asset prices, yield curves, volatility surfaces, and so forth. And we must compute the market risks, the sensitivities of the prices, to all of these variables so that we can hedge them. Conventionally, we do it by bumping, repeatedly bump all the inputs one by one and recalculate. But this is very slow because it takes one full evaluation for every sensitivity. In machine learning, we must predict all the training examples for every connection weight, and in finance, recalculate a whole Monte Carlo for every market variable. So, in contrast, AD computes all differentials in a time similar to one evaluation, giving us speed-ups in the thousands in both machine learning and finance. It's the key technology for deep learning. It couldn't exist otherwise. And in finance, it gives us real-time risk management. And by computing risk faster, we can understand and hedge them better. So uh, as an example, consider Dupier's local volatility model implemented with a thousand local vols or something. Pricing a barrier option with Monte Carlo, half a million paths, 150 steps, one price takes around a second. We want to compute the risks to all the local vols. So that's a thousand differentials to calculate. It would take us a thousand seconds or 15 minutes with bumping. With AED, we get them in less than two seconds. It's that powerful. And you don't have to take my word for it. On my GitHub repo, I uploaded the source code, the pre-built executable, the demonstration spreadsheet, so you can run it yourselves. So how does it work? Well, to understand AD, you must understand that it's fundamentally different from bumping. With bumping, all you need is a function to call repeatedly. But with AD, you must know the exact sequence of operations that constitute F. This is called the computation graph. Consider a simple example, Black and Scholes. This is the formula together with the steps to compute it. This is a possible implementation in code in C++ or TensorFlow. And this is the computation graph where you see the steps for, um, of how you get from the uh, inputs on the left to the result on the right. A computation graph is not only an um, abstract way of thinking about a computation. It's a real thing in memory. In TensorFlow, you can visualize it. The graph of Black and Scholes looks like this. Take another example, a simple neural network, two hidden layers, defined by its feedforward equations. This is how you compute every layer out of a previous layer, eventually giving you a prediction in the output layer. So you feed inputs x, a uh, vector of inputs x, multiplied by a matrix of weights, add the biases, activate, get the first hidden layer, repeat for the second, and the output layer, get your prediction, compute a loss, in this case, uh, the um, square prediction error, and this gives you the complete computation graph from inputs x to loss c. Graphs break computations down to algebraic primitives that we call ops. These ops are completely specified by the feedforward equation. This is how you get the outputs y from the inputs x and some parameters theta by application of a function phi. This function phi completely specifies the op. There exists only a limited number of ops, like matrix product, vector addition, activation, and so forth. And all these ops hard code their feedforward equation. We can differentiate an op. Suppose you already know the differentials of some result C to the outputs, dc, dy, which we conveniently denote y bar. Then by the chain rule, you can immediately compute the differentials to the inputs, dc, dx, equal dy, dx, dc, dy. Here, dy, dx is the Jacobian matrix of phi 
2x, denoted phi x, and you get a compact notation for the differentials to the inputs x bar equal phi x y bar. We think of it as the differential of a feedforward equation. This is also called the adjunct equation. This adjunct equation only depends on phi. So like the feedforward equation, it is hardwired in the up, but whereas the feedforward equation computes outputs from in inputs and flows left to right, um, the adjunct equation computes the differential to inputs from the differential to outputs, and so it flows right to left. Um, in the same way, you get the differentials to the parameters, theta bar. This is the same equation because in this picture, parameters and inputs are completely symmetric. So an op really defines three equations. First, the feedforward equation that computes the outputs from the inputs. Second, the adjunct equation that computes the differentials to the inputs from the differentials to the outputs. And finally, the parameter adjunct equation computing the differentials to parameters from differential to outputs. Now, here it looks like uh, we are overwriting the differentials, but it's much better to accumulate them because then and only then the adjunct equations remain valid when inputs or parameters are shared across multiple ops. Examples of ops include activation, vector addition, or matrix product. And bringing them all together, we get the backpropagation algorithm, which is a very powerful algorithm. Recall the graph of a neural network. What can we do with it? We can evaluate it with the feedforward equations in the natural order, left to right. Seed with the inputs, um, compute the sequence of feedforward equations, get a prediction, compute a loss. Now you can differentiate the loss with the adjunct equations, but they work the other way around, so you need to reverse the computation flow. Seed the backpropagation from the right with the differential to the prediction, compute the sequence of adjunct equations right to left, and that computes all the differentials you need in one single traversal of a graph. And this is the secret behind the magic speed. One traversal for evaluation, one reverse traversal for uh, differentiation. So backpropagation, uh, this is how backpropagation works, but it has applications much broader than just these vanilla feedforward neural networks. It works with convolutional networks because the convolution is just an app. It works with uh, recurrent networks once you unroll them, and it works with all the fancy um, uh, and complicated neural network architectures fashionable with machine learning. And here's the important result. Backprop works with any kind of computation graph. Hence, it works with absolutely any calculation you will ever write in your lives because all calculations define computation graphs. Not only neural nets, but includes Black-Scholes, as we have already seen, and also large Monte Carlo implementations of sophisticated models. So, in order to apply backpropagation, we need to reverse the computation flow. This is very clear for the sequential graphs of vanilla feedforward networks. But it's less clear when we have a lot of different connections and ramifications. Look at the graph of Black and Scholes. Black and Scholes is the simplest calculation you will ever write. And yet we have all these connections all over the place. So it's really unclear what it means to calculate the adjunct equations right to left. What does it mean to reverse the, con the, the flow exactly? And in what order should we calculate these adjunct equations? The answer is given by graph theory. Um, differentiation must be applied in the so-called topological order. That just means that the output of every up must be differentiated before that up. So what we could do is run a topological sort and backprop the sorted graph. But this is very inefficient because topological sorts are expensive. And this is where AAD comes into play. Notice we never worry about the evaluation order of the feedforward equations. The compilers take care of this for us and guarantee a correct order of execution. Um, and we have a fundamental result in graph theory. The topological order is the exact reverse of the execution order. Now, leveraging this result, AED gives us an elegant and efficient solution. Record the ops as they are executed. When we execute it, we record them on a data structure that we call tape on AAD lingo. So we always get a flattened graph as a sequence in the execution order, and we can directly backpropagate the adjunct equations right to left. 
In our black shells example, we can't work directly with a non-sequential graph, but if we record the ops on tape during execution, we get it in a flat sequential format, which makes it easy to backpropagate. Seed with the um, uh, differential of a call price to itself, which is obviously one, apply argent equations right to left through the tape, and calculate the differentials to all the inputs in one single pass. So what ops do we record on tape? You know, calculations may be long and complex. The implementation in code may involve nested function calls, interactions between objects of different classes, and so forth. But if you look deep enough into any code ever written, you will always find nothing else than sequences of elementary arithmetic and maths. Additions, multiplications, taking square roots, and so forth. And it's exactly these building blocks that we record on tape. Practically, we record them with operator overloading or expression templates. Uh, control flow always complicates differentiation, adjunct or otherwise, because by nature it is discontinuous. That's why traders always smooth discontinuous payoffs, and as developers we must also smooth um, our discontinuous control flow. This is an important matter, and this, there is a lot to say about it. But this is a story for another day, because now I want to show you how we can bring it all together to get this magic speed for risk management. Consider a simulation model with parameters theta that includes the initial state of the market and the parameters of its dynamic evolution. For example, it could be a local and stochastic volatility model. We have a derivatives transaction, a trading book, specified by a set of event-driven cash flows paid on future dates, and we want to calculate its value V and its risks, dV, d theta. So we do it with a familiar Monte Carlo algorithm. As, as usual, we simulate a path with a model, evaluate all the cash flows on this path, and evaluate the payoff, which is the discounted sum of the cash flows. This is very classic, but now we record all of it on tape. Seed with the model parameters, record the path simulation, the evaluation of the cash flow, and the accumulation of the payoff. Now we can backpropagate to get the differentials of the payoff with respect to all the parameters. These are called pathwise derivatives. Seed with a derivative of a payoff to itself, which is obviously one, apply the now familiar uh, adjunct equation right to left, and get all the pathwise derivatives in one single traversal. Repeat with many simulations. The average payoff converges to the true value, of course, but the average pathwise differentials also converge to the true model risks. All these pathwise differentials are calculated very quickly in one traversal of a tape and accurately to machine precision with an analytic uh, application of a chain rule. With a, good with a good implementation, you get a full risk report, including maybe thousands of risks, for the cost of four valuations. All of this, of course, assumes that you have a correct state-of-the-art simulation model in your system, a consistent representation of cash flows across trading books, um, and a simulation engine that brings it all together properly, efficiently, and including an efficient state-of-the-art implementation of AED. In my experience, this is very hard to come by. And this is why my department, Superfly Analytics in Danske Bank, won the in-house system of the year 2015 Risk Award, and is again nominated in 2019 for the Excellence in Risk Management and Modeling, Risk Mind Awards. So I hope I managed to pique your interest. You will find all the details in my book, Modern Computational Finance, with Wiley, and I would like to leave you with one final thought. AED gives us real-time risks of trading books, but that's today, given the current state of the market. If you want to really step up your risk management, you want to see your dynamic risks and value in the future, depending on the future state. Um, in investment banks, we don't have a choice. We need these for regulations. So how can we compute them efficiently in real time? We can't run a Monte Carlo simulation for every possible future state. That's called nested simulations, and that's really slow, really inefficient. So my colleagues and I have been looking for answers in the past few months, and we have found them in the connection of derivatives technology with deep learning. We call it deep analytics because it's similar to deriving analytic approximations on the fly. We will publish it soon. In the meantime, you can see our preview on deepanalytics.org. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.